Good morning, and welcome to worship on this beautiful day that God has created and given to us. Um, last night, I found myself a little bit jealous and a lot thankful. Um, thankful because I had two feet of snow out in Casper, Wyoming, and I'm thankful I don't live there anymore. And a little bit jealous because we were talking to my sister-in-law who lives in Alabama and she said it was a nice warm 70 degrees. You know, I'm not quite ready for this nippy 60 degree Minnesota fall weather, but it's coming. We pray that that nasty four letter word holds off until all of our farmers get, get done in the fields and get all that done. So. Um, just a few announcements this morning for those that are Medicare age or getting close. Um, there will be a, um, a gathering about what's new in Medicare 
and it's Wednesday, October 20th, 10 to noon at the library here in St. James. And there's a number you can RSVP if you'd like to go. Um, I'm getting close to having to do that, so it reminds me myself that, <laughs> okay, not quite there yet. Um, announcements, there is no confirmation this week because of MEA. Or Sunday school next week. Oh, it's in there for Sunday school. Okay, yeah, no Sunday school next Sunday either. Um, thank you for that. We w <laughs> Thank you for that. I forgot where I was at now. Huh? Anyway, so then we'll <laughs> start confirmation again on the 27th. In November, confirmation will take place at Zion in Hanska. Um, also, Trunk or Treat is next, not next Friday, two weeks from now. Um, we have a few people signed up. Please, if you'd like to s sign up, or you can just show up and have a trunk ready to hand out all the goodies to the kids. Um, I hear that there's usually a great turnout, so hopefully there will be this year too. And then on Reformation Sunday, we will be having a joint worship here at Faith with Lake Hanska and Zion. So it's only the one service that day. Um, and I'm praying that we will have many full pews that, that morning. So they're still doing the food on Thursday nights. Through the end of the year. So if you. You know, I just get to knowing what I'm doing and throw a wrench in the works. So yeah, they have wonderful prepared meals that they're giving out at the uh, elementary school on Thursdays, except this Thursday because it's MEA. And so you can freeze them or, you know, um, enjoy them. So anybody who would like can go and get these meals. This last week, we were going to um, celebrate the life of Jere Armstrong, who was a member at Zion. Um, he passed away due to, due to numerous things popping up. We have now scheduled his funeral for Saturday, October 23rd, out at Lake Hanska. Visitation is from 9 to 11, and the service is at 11. And so, prayers to their family. And then just would like to add a couple prayers, or a couple people to the prayer list. Um, one is Betty Anderson from Zion, and the other is Archie Pearson from Lake Hanska. So keep them in your prayers. Any other announcements? Going once. Oh, by the way, there is nothing this week because of MEA. <laughs> okay. Also, I will tell you that I am moving even slower than normal, which I know is really slow. Um, I took my seven-year-old and five-year-old granddaughter swimming last night, and I have decided that that is for people in their 20s and 30s to do. Um, loved it, it was great, but just a little stiff this morning. So anyway, we have come to worship God and to see how God is working in us and through us and with us. Today in the gospel, James and John walk up to Jesus and ask him to seat them at his right and left hand in his glory. They wanted greatness. So how do we, how do we handle either being a servant or trying to be the greatest? Let us set a, center ourselves for worship.
Please rise as you are able, and we will begin with our confession and forgiveness. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us be seated for our opening hymn. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Sovereign God, you turn your greatness into goodness for all the peoples on earth. Shape us into willing servants of your kingdom and make us desire always and only your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. 
Good morning. The first reading is from the last four passages in Isaiah that are often called servant songs. Christians are probably most familiar with this servant song. In light of Christian faith, the servant's healing, ministry, and redemptive suffering are understood to be fulfilled in the life and death of Christ. The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 53, verses 4 through 12. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we leaked all we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him, the will of the Lord will prosper. Out of his anguish, he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Word of God, word of life. We will read Psalm 91, verses 9 through 16, responsively by whole verse. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, the Most High your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you. No scourge come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Those who love me I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. Using imagery from scripture and from Jewish worship practices, Jesus is presented in the second lesson as the great high priest who was obedient to God's saving plan. Through his suffering and death, he has become the source of eternal salvation. The second lesson is in Hebrews 5, verses 1 through 10. Every high priest chosen from among mortals is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with the ignorant and wayward, since he himself is subject to weakness. And because of this, he must offer sacrifice for his own sins, as well as for those of the people. And one does not presume to take this honor, but takes it only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, you are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. 
In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And Jesus said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink you will drink and with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, you know that among the Gentiles, though those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. This is the Gospel of the Lord. So kids, is it better to be first or second? First. Right? We all strive to be first or the best at things, right? Our society, our world teaches us that value is placed on those, or more value is placed on those that are great, that are first. So now here's the next question. Who won the Super Bowl last year? It's kind of the answer I got at Zion, too. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, yes. And we might know who lost? Kansas City, yeah. That one wasn't quite as, well, we think it was Kansas City, but it could have been, you know. But we'll remember for a while, because one, they'll remind us for a while, that Tampa Bay won the Super Bowl last year, right? And that makes them the greatest. And we look up to those people, don't we? Those that are the greatest. Because I, like I said, deep down, we all want to be great. We want to, to do wonderful things and be known for it. Before going to seminary, 
I was a synodically authorized lay minister down in the Nebraska Synod. And I was serving a little congregation in a town about the size of Hanska. And they were having their annual Thanksgiving Eve service. And this year, or that year, they, were have, they had um, a whole bunch of musical pieces, which I always find wonderful. Actually, I would love if we sang more hymns Sunday. I'm sure our musicians cringe at that, but I would like to sing more songs. Anyway, so here we are sitting, and there's this gal that had come all the way from back east. She was home visiting family for Thanksgiving, and they had talked her into singing for us that night. This woman was a classically trained opera singer. And so she gets up and she sings, and it, it, it's beautiful. You know, I don't remember the song, but it was beautiful, and we were in awe. And a couple songs later, this young woman from the town got up to sing, and it happened to be that her song choice was the exact same one that the opera singer had sang. And you could tell she didn't want to get up. Because how could she, how could she do justice to this song the same way that this opera singer had? This person who performed in front of crowds whose name was known. And she got up, and you could tell, like I said, through the whole thing, she was nervous but she did beautifully. And in many ways, I remember her rendition, her singing this hymn more so than the opera singer because this gal was singing from her heart. You know what I mean? I, the opera singer kind of was too, but this gal was singing from her heart. This meant, this meant a lot to her. And I think at times that we forget those that aren't great, right? We're just part of the pack. I also worked in ho small hospital laboratories for 17 years before going to seminary. And I, let me tell you, I learned a lot. I could tell you stories. But some of the people that I admired the most were the house cleaners. Because these, and they were mainly women, these woman, women would go in and clean the rooms. And they were the most dispensable employees in the system. If there were wages to be cut or jobs to be laid off, these were the ones that went first. But in my mind, in, in, what I believe is that they were some of the most important people in that whole system. And we have never, ever recognized them for what they do, how they serve other people. And I'm sure, as with many of us who, okay, I flipped burgers quite a few times in my life. Those times where you would like that better job, the more pay, people recognizing you because of who you are, not because of what you do. But those are the people that serve. And there are quite a few in those professions who serve willingly and are excited that they 
can do that. And I'd also like to, to say with greatness, you know, yeah, it's great to be first. Don't we push our kids a little too hard sometimes to be the best in school? You have to have the best grades or be on the best teams. Do your best. And then they leave and get into the real world. And what do they find? I've talked with a lot of kids first, second year of college who seem so lost because they're just either a number or they're not great anymore. So how are we preparing not only ourselves, but our children, what it means to serve, what it means not to be the greatest, or if you are, still continue to serve. But how are we, as the people of God, the people of faith, Lutheran Church, preparing ourselves and others to serve? The other thing that I've come to realize is that even though I'm new here and still getting to know all of you and forming relationships with you, this parish that you, we are now a part of is new also, isn't it? It's Faith, Lake Hanska, and Zion. We are a parish. And together, how are we growing? How are we finding ways to get past these pains that we have? Because it can be stressful. It's almost like a marriage. The one spouse is raised one way, the other spouse is raised another, and then they marry, and, and there's a huge adjustment period, isn't there? Here in a couple weeks, we will be worshiping as one parish. Part of what I would like to see, and I believe God would like to see too, is that we find ways to forge relationships, stronger relationships, so we can all serve as a parish, as individual congregations and as individuals. And I believe we have a good start. You see, no matter how long I'm here, all of you will be here longer. And God needs your help. God needs your abilities to continue to grow this parish and his body in our world. So yeah, you know what? It would be wonderful to be great, to have your name known in the world for all the right reasons. I don't want to be known for all the bad reasons. but also serving because that's who you are is the greatest gift for yourself and for the person that you're serving. And the amazing thing about serving is while you're serving others, others are serving you. And we're all growing in our faith together. And I believe that's what Jesus is telling us in this gospel. That God's plans include all of us. And it does take all of us, even our little children, 
to, to serve each other in this world. So as we continue on our journey together, I pray that we can find ways to step out of our comfort zone and find ways to serve. And so I'm thankful to God that we're all together and that through God's doing, I have been called to help you on this journey, to lead and guide you. Just as you have been called on this journey to help me. And yes, sometimes lead and guide me. So just thanks be to God for us being together. Amen. So in your bulletin, your, resp your response is wrong. <laughs> I will say, hear us, O God, and your response is, your mercy is great. And it might be right on the slides, I don't know. So set free from sin and death and nourished by the word of truth, we join in prayer for all of God's creation. Holy One, for the gift of the church handed down through the ages and for all who carry on the servant ministry of Jesus, we praise you. Send your Holy Spirit upon all who are discerning calls to ministry in its many forms and equip them with your gifts. Be with those in this congregation who are discerning how to help lead and to serve others. Hear us, O oh God, creating one for the lush and abundant habitat you provide for all your creatures. We praise you. Provide healing for the earth so that waterfowl, reptiles, wild horses, dolphins and all living things flourish as you intend. Keep our farmers safe during this time so they may complete the harvest and take care of your creation. Hear us, O oh God. Is Suffering one, for all who work toward peace and who lead nations with a servant's heart, we praise you. Bring justice for all who suffer violence, 
persecution, discrimination, hunger, poverty, and homelessness, and create places of refuge for all people. Hear us, O oh God. Merciful one, for all who do the work of healing in mind, body, and spirit, we praise you. Surround and comfort all who struggle with depression, anxiety, cancer, diabetes, dementia, or any illness, especially those that we name in our hearts now. That they may be healed. Hear us, O God. Sustaining one for all who volunteer for the vitality of this congregation, we praise you. Strengthen and encourage our greeters, ushers, office staff, volunteers, bakers, counters, committee and group leaders, teachers, students, evangelists, singers, builders, nurturers, and all who serve with generous hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Risen One, we thank you for those who have shaped your church and shared your gospel. Through the witness of your saints, continue to inspire us with hope until we are all gathered at your eternal feast. Hear us, O oh God. Confident that you hear us, O God, we boldly place our prayers into your hands through Jesus Christ, our truth and life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us share a sign of peace with one another at this time. And I don't know if this is in your bulletin. We have an update on the noisy offering. So far, as of 1010, we have collected $470.96 towards shipping the Operation Christmas Child boxes. Sorry, we have Operation Christmas Child. We have Christmas for Children. Um, I get confused. Anyway. So we are still collecting noisy offering at the end of the service to help us ship all these wonderful packages that will be packed November 3rd, 4th, 7th. We'll just pick a day, okay? November 7th at 9.30 during the Sunday school hour, which is not MEA week. <laughs> I won't forget that one, now will I? <laughs> so our offering plate is in the back, um, as is the noisy offering ba basket. Um, let us pray. God of abundance, you cause streams to break forth in the desert and manna to rain from the heavens. Accept the gifts you have first given us, unite them with the offering of our lives to nourish the world you love so dearly, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we will join together in our sending song. Thank you. 